<laughs> Good morning. I'd like to uh, call to order the Board of Selectmen regular meeting for Monday, January 6, 2014. It is now 8.30. Uh, first order of business, Pledge of Allegiance. I would like Selectman Cartier to lead us in that, please. Sure. Okay. All rise. <clears throat> Uh, I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. <coughs> all right. Public forum limited to three minutes on any agenda item. I don't see anybody wishing to address the board. We'll move on to item three, approval of minutes, uh, December 16th. 2013 regular meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved. Is uh, there a second? Second. Okay. Any additions or corrections? I I would just make a comment mm -hmm. because we had a the discussion about the lights on the on the uh, basketball courts, and it occurred to me afterwards um, that we could consider a motion detector. Mm -hmm. I just we we had talked oh, about ways to. of limiting the, the lights being on. I, it, maybe when Jim comes, we could pass that on to him or something. Uh, I think we mentioned that. Didn't oh, we? did we? Yeah. And in the yeah. past, they have animals. Oh, okay, okay. And the animal, but if it's high enough, the animal shouldn't trigger it. Well, whatever. Sure I, I got it. It, it was a it, it was a thought that I had when I read the, read through the minutes again. Perhaps. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, the other uh, clarification is that the uh, police chief informed me uh, that they do not have a switch. That the dispatchers can control. So that's just for information. It ha doesn't have to go in the minutes. Someone who police department yeah. told me that. No, he said there wasn't any. Okay, any uh, other comments? We have a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Thank I abstain. Carol. One abstention. Four affirmative, one abstention. Okay. Um, approval of minutes for December 23rd, special meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Any additions or corrections, comments? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Moving right along, item three. Board of Education Director of Operations slash Facilities, Cliff Kernan. 4.1, discuss and take possible action to award RFQ slash RFP. 3-1314, Adams Windows slash Doors and renovations, district-wide security upgrade, and ball and windows and doors. Cliff, good morning. Good morning, how are we doing? Good. Thanks for having me. This uh, bid actually encompassed three projects. Uh, we're looking for uh, architects and engineering firms for each one of those three projects. The first project was the Adams window, door, and renovation project. The second project was a district-wide security upgrade for schools. That would include Guilford Lakes, uh, Calvin Lee, uh, Melissa Jones in Baldwin. And then the third project was windows and doors at Baldwin. So <coughs> we had the individual A&E firms give us three different uh, packets or proposals for each one of those. And the standing building committee evaluated first, obviously the qualifications of each firm, and then we went and we reviewed the individual proposals for each project. Um, some of the a &E firms were vented through qualifications and others were vented through the uh, proposal process. Uh, at the end of it, um, the Standing Building Committee uh, recommended that we award all three projects to Silver Petroselli and Associates. They're from Hamden, Connecticut. We've used them on multiple projects, including one we're finishing up now at Adams, which was a uh, relatively large uh, mechanical project, and that went very well. So um, because we've had great success with them, we feel very comfortable. They are very aggressive with their numbers. They always have been. That's why we've used them uh, uh, so often in a lot of our projects. So. Uh, so we're recommending that we award all three bids to Silver Petroselli and Associates for $127,460. Those uh, funds uh, for each one of those projects come out of bond referendums in a combination from the 2013 and, and uh, 2014 bond. So, so it's just a, it, you can do it as a package, you don't have to be separate. 
Correct. Yep. When you say aggressive with your numbers, what do you refer well, to? They're always on the lower scale. Um, that's what I mean, but they're always uh, uh, very strong. They competitive? Very, very competitive. Very competitive. Okay. Sometimes I would take aggressive to mean they're a little bit <laughs> yeah. more expensive. No, usually you're lower yeah. than what you originally planned for. It seems like the for trend. You know, when you lower than what you, I don't say budgeted, but you know, when you go out for the rough, not. Nah, it seems like you're coming in a lower than what you were anticipating, which is good. We often, yes, yeah. we're relatively close. And, and keep in mind, when we design our budget, there is a contingency in there. Yeah. So hopefully mm -hmm. we do come under because then we're not using our contingencies, that's, yeah. so that's important. Um, we've, I know we've used them in the past uh, many times. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, was there one or two incidents where we were, we had a problem with them? Uh, we did have one incident uh, about a year ago uh, where there was some confusion. Uh, was it the water tank? It was the water, okay. uh, the cooling tower, right. where there were I don't know if you want to get all the details, but there was confusion on what was going to be covered by the contractor um, and then what the architect thought. So we did have that issue. Um, I know that's been it was settled and right, resolved. And resolved. resolved. Uh, so we're okay as we go forward with them. That we don't have any confusion with the, no. the future bids and this bid here. Correct. Okay. So we, we did a scope review and everything else okay. with uh, Silver Petra Selling and Associates, and we feel comfortable that they they do uh, and can be what we're looking at trying to do on each one of these projects. So our goal project-wise is uh, to get moving very quickly on the first two projects, and then the third project, the Baldwin project, is actually uh, next year's. So we'll do the design work, and hopefully the projects, uh, both Adams and the security upgrades for the summer of 20. 14, mm -hmm. and then the windows at Baldwin will be 2015, but it allows us to get ahead and start doing our design work uh, so we don't get backed up. Will they be writing the specs too? Yes, they will. Okay. They do the whole, they'll write the specs, uh, they'll bid the specs, uh, they help us with the review of the proposals and everything else. Yes. Okay, when you say they bid the specs, mm -hmm. it does not go through our bidding Well, process? it does. Oh. They put together the bid packet and then in conjunction with the purchasing agent, uh, and then it, everything goes out to the purchasing agent here. So we, we but control. But they do the walk, correct. We control it, okay. but they're there at the walkthrough with us and make okay. sure they answer all the questions and RFQs and stuff. So. But the security upgrades, are they more technical video and, and, and that type of thing? As opposed to the other two seem to be construction. I'm just wondering about the specialization and how the bids vary. Um, I'm not talking loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a combination uh, of the two. There is a bit of construction going in there. Uh, if you've been down to Cox or looked at Cox, we reconfigured the main office in oh, so the so way, so there is construction okay. as well, not just uh, video and, and technical. Uh, just sometimes that the electronic stuff is so much more specialized. But, right. Carl, you had a question? Yeah, the, um, when you say windows at Adams, mm -hmm. um, which windows are those? Because we just we replaced all the uh, big uh, half round. Correct. So we did the 1936 building okay. in 2009, if I'm not mistaken. We're shifting to the 1955 section, which is the south building, okay. and we'll be redoing many of the windows there. There's heavy rust, there's single pane okay. insulation, a lot of leaks and problems. So. Okay. Cliff, first of all, it's worth noting that the bids range from up to 443,000, more than three times the bid that, that you're recommending. Right. But uh, th there were a couple of bids uh, for partial, which if you add them together, come up to less, uh, including one for 28,000 for the security upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, why didn't you consider those separately? Uh, again, we l reviewed everything um, starting by one project at a time. Uh, so if somebody wasn't qualified or wasn't strong in that area, they may have been eliminated prior to looking at this. Uh, the way the standing building committee operates is we fully review the RFQ first. Without, they don't get this information. They don't see your proposal until after we've done our qualification process. Once we get through the qualification process, uh, then they can see the actual bid. So uh, if there's a vendor on here, a firm on here, that they have a lower price, they may have been eliminated prior to even uh, getting to the proposal step. Uh, and that's why we did that. So the standing building committee will go back and take a second look at that number, but in this case, uh, they didn't feel that that was 
item five. out of separate to bid the equipment and this company firematic supply out of rocky hill connecticut is the low bidder for these four thermal imaging cameras for a total of thirty eight thousand two hundred and sixty two twelve these are replacing 1992 models that are uh, not repairable they do not support them any longer okay and i i will uh, add that the finance department has informed me that uh uh, taking into consideration what was approved for the capital budget, yeah. subtracting out the encumbrances with just the purchase orders for those three vehicles, uh, there's 125000 left. Right. To be exact, 25064 uh, left. Right. The only remaining item that will be coming back to the board for is the hope. Um, just a question, when you mentioned the hose, uh, will that still be on the budget or are we going to? There was another occupant in the car. Um, we scanned the seat with a thermal imaging camera and found out that there was only one imprint on the seat in this particular piece of data. So we use them for a lot of purposes. And we're replacing 1999? 92. 92. 92. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 22 yourself? Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chief. Thank you. <clears throat> Item six, uh, town engineer Jim Portley, 6.1, discuss and take possible action on the Vineyard Point Road Bridge project over Van the Trolley Line as a result of the public hearing held December 16, 2013. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Guys had a busy weekend, huh? Oh, good. Wonderful weekend. Mm -hmm. But got done. Um, had the public hearing. The uh, supplemental application has been put together. Uh, the, you know, some refinements in the design as we went from the preliminary application to the to the uh, supplemental one. We did increase the price uh, because the the, the culvert was extended out to make fit into the topography better. So instead of a, a 66 foot length of culvert, we had bring it out to 88 feet. Um, price uh, went from, well, the final price was uh, 283837 of which we're entitled by the supplemental application form of 45% to $127,896 of funding from the, uh, from the state under the uh, local bridge program. So it, uh, I think it's a project that's been on our radar for a long time. It's been part of our capital improvement program for a long time. It's, uh, it's time we do it. Uh, the rest of the funds, aside from the uh, local bridge program money that we will get, will come from LOSIP. So there will be no local uh, tax money in this. It will be all from through state state funding. Jim, um, what was your numbers to get on me? You know? Yeah, you must have the original. 243? That was the original. 450, right? Yeah, that was the original. And we but this application is... The supplemental is uh, it's two, be. 283, 837, of which we would get uh, 45%. 45%. That's right. 127, okay. The documentation that I got from uh, the state, the DOT, uh, 
says 109,698. Yeah. I know that, that was the original, original application. Okay, yeah. so what are we approving? To, what do you want us to approve today? The supplemental application. Okay. Yeah. Which would bring it up to the 282. Correct. Okay. Jim, you don't have the ability to put your engineering fees in here? No. No. Or if you don't, you slide them in someplace. But okay. Pay them. Well, <laughs> g given the fact that they reimburse 45, if it, you know. Oh, no, it'd be very nice. Because other like towns, well, other it. towns could have gone outside for engineering and been reimbursed. I'm not sure that they're eligible for okay. this program. Um, we, we've used this program on uh, Grayville Road Bridge and on the Flat Meadow Road culvert replacement twice before. And again, we did them in house, so I don't have any experience in that. We just take care of it you know, by doing it ourselves because a lot faster. Mm. No, I'm not arguing with, lot, with doing it yourself. No, I'm just that, arguing yeah. with, oh, or oh, just yeah, questioning I, whether or not we can get some state reimbursement uh, for our own expenses. I, I tend to doubt it's supposed to be money that goes into construction. Okay. Okay. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the supplemental? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Jim, all right, we got one more. Okay, this is uh, for uh, 6.2 is when we discuss and take possible action. And that should say lots of L O T C I P right. application for Westlake Avenue milling and overlay project. Uh, the lots of it's a, uh, it's a new program. It's a new program that's to be initiated this year. It, uh, it's a program supposedly set up, and I, I did send along with my cover memo at least the first couple of pages from what is being. Uh, Put out by the DOT is the Local Transportation Capital Improvement Program. It's a program intended, uh, this is entirely funded by the state, intended to get money out into the uh, into construction faster through what they claim is going to be a, a much faster uh, uh, review and, and, and just uh, oversight program. Unfortunately, when we receive the uh, the application and the, the directives that went with that with the new program, there was a, a reaction by regional planning agencies and local communities that the process wasn't any simpler than the, the process we go through for the federal money. They, they have the same steps because that's their mindset. Um, there was a committee set up with uh, Mike Frieda, who was the uh, uh, mayor of North Haven, or first elected from North Haven. and. Uh, I think there were seven or eight of us who were town engineers to go up. We spoke to the commissioner to try the DOT to try to uh, simplify the, the process. Um, we had, a, I thought, a productive meeting. They, uh, he had people who had put the application process or application procedures together. They said they, they were going to work on it. Within a couple of weeks, we got the same set of regulations come through with no change but with the promise that they were going to make it a lot easier. <laughs> well, we all know a promise that you do. Um, so what we have as a group decided that the communities in, in the South Central Regional Planning Agency would do is we would put some applications together for money under this program, but we would modify the application process ourselves to uh, demonstrate to the commissioner that there's a lot easier way to do this, uh, this whole, if you want, really want to get money out into the, into the uh, construction industry, if you really want to get projects moving, follow the LOSIP model, which is the model that uh, we've used for years and years. It's just a, 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 a your town identifies a project, the Board of Selectmen approves it, we submit that application to the Office of Management and Budget. They say, fine, you got, you got your board of selectmen behind it, the town wants to do it, the, you have the money through the LOSA program, go ahead and do it and just tell us what it costs. And then at the end of it, you get audited. You know, it's not like you get out there and can spend money wildly, you still have to be audited at the end of it. So we've, we've taken the initiative to, uh, and I've, what I've submitted with this application, and North Haven, or Wallingford is the only other town that's putting an application. I've taken the LOSIP application form and modified it to just call it the lots of program. I've taken all references to uh, the Office of Management and Budget out of it and, uh, and just put in the appropriate public act numbers that reflect the, the, new, uh, the new legislation that was created to, to uh, create this program. And we're trying to get this, the commissioner to realize there's a lot 
faster way to go about this, to take away all the review processes that are unnecessary, um, or that they think are necessary. And they have come about through a lot of the years of running uh, a program like this using federal money. The federal regulations are, are very cumbersome, and uh, our belief is that the new regulations promulgated by DOT are just as cumbersome. This is an attempt to try to get this program going. If, if it fails, well, it fails. All we, we spent is a couple of weeks putting this application together and, and so forth. But I think it's, it's, a, it's a project that I think has, its, has great merit. Westlake Avenue is a road that we began reconstructing in the early 80s. It was built under original standards, was a, a two and a half inch pavement. That was the standard at the time when I first got to work here. And uh, it, has, it has stood, stood up well. But there's a lot of cracking. There's a lot of uh, places where it really needs to be either overlaid or, or uh, in some places, some minor reconstruction done. So we've taken a set of plans. We've taken that whole length of road, which is uh, 12,000 feet, which is about just a little over two miles of road. Uh, and we've said, OK, give us the money to skim, grind off the first inch of pavement, and then overlay it. With, with two co coats of paper. One is a leveling course, and then would be with one with a wearing course, course in the process. Put new curbs in, put new catch basin tops, because again, they've been in there 30 to 35 years. Upgrade that road. And it's, it's, it's a, pro a project that was, is consistent with the, the project that we just did on Stepstone, North Madison Road. That was an ARA project, you know, that uh, again, uh, stimulus project. So, um, we're well, hopefully I'm, I'm optimistic that the commission will say, "Listen, we've got to, we're going to get this money. Seven million dollars has to be has been allocated to the South Central region. Uh, that's in in North Haven, the, that cog. There's only tr two projects, ours and North Haven. They, uh, no, I'm sorry, Wallingford. They have a bridge that they want to do. And so between the two, if they can, we can get these going." Hopefully the commissioner and DOT will say, okay, we need to get some of this money out into the, into the construction industry. Uh, let's prove it as it is and let, let us work this as, out as we go. There's no guarantees, uh, but to me it's a, it's a good shot. It's, a, it's a, a project, I think, that has a lot of merit for the community and as well as for all the other communities in the area who need to get projects going, need to take care of their roads. If this, is the, this money is supposed to be out there to, to help the uh, local communities improve their infrastructure, the best way to do it is get out there rather than spending months and months and months through review. And, and, uh, and I will tell you, going through Long Hill Road right now, it's a long and cumbersome process. Wednesday morning we have a preliminary design meeting on the, the Long Hill Road project. There are at least eight to t um, probably ten different divisions of DOT that review the preliminary plans. They will all be there and will sit there and go through all the comments about moving this post from here to here and doing. It's you know I, I know it's it's the way they do that, uh, but it, it's just uh, very time consuming and and because it the way it's set up is every bit of money yeah. that's spent. The, oh, you were allocated money. They they keep skimming off. Oh, you know, right. Gary, he's got two hours on the uh, You know, we have for Mr. Ballas Tracy did two uh, two weeks work down there, work looking around the archaeological background. The first uh, and they go Thanks. through. And you have wait, wait, just all the money. Just the money. You're, you're only using them as an example. I, then I get oh, that. No, 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 no I want my real check, real Jim. Real I, give me the deal. check. No, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, I just want to be clear. Trying to illustrate what happens. He associates <laughs> old age with archaeology. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> the one thing I will say uh, in regard to the application process that we're being asked to approve. This, this morning, uh, all of the uh, mayors and first selectmen in the South Central Council of Governments have agreed that we've we've got to take this on our own or take the bull by the horn, so to speak, and do it this way. Right. So we are going to present this to the COG at the Transportation Committee meeting on Wednesday, right? And uh, we shouldn't have any problems there, at least not that I'm aware. Of. If if, so. the, if they don't agree, then they're foolish. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, they, yeah. we have to fight for this money. Right. We have to fight for a process that that. 
is more responsive to the communities. Yeah, because the what the state is doing is taking the $45 million that is allocated from the federal government, and uh, they're using it, but they're what they're going to do is to, to bond money for the COGS, $7 million, and I don't know what the rest of the COGS are getting, but it's close well, it, to it's it. supposed to be a one-to-one. -one. Yeah. They're, they're, they're $45 million of federal money is allocated to local communities. The state is going to keep that for, and, and I'm not, and I think they're, you know, they're, they're important projects. I'm, they, they, the replacement of bridges and so forth on, on I-95 or the Merritt Parkway, whatever. But they, the 45 million dollars that they're going to, they're going to keep, the the other, the, they're going to replace that 45 million dollars with, with as Joe said, with bonded money. So that's supposed to get out to the public. So the, the, the local localities, the municipalities' infrastructure can also be, continue to be upgraded. Because these projects are expensive. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing how much it costs to do all stuff. And without casting aspersions on my colleague <laughs> and myself, having reviewed some of these, it means that if you get the million, it gets spent here as opposed to 15 or 20 percent getting siphoned off into exactly. state agencies. Exactly. I mean, yes. Not not to the selectmen, but to state agencies. Well, we, we know you've been skimming. Uh, no, of course. That's exactly. I was I was trying to uh, I, imply anything no. that, but that's exactly what my point. Right. Get the money out into the, into the into the construction industry. Let's let's build things. Let's not right. just have people sitting around a table. Now, the okay. is great, but I, sort of we better get, we better do whatever we have to do. We're yeah. going downhill fast. Yeah. <laughs> Carl has it. In the COG votes, um, and they discussed that at the meeting. Mm -hmm. at the budget, um, are all the first selectmen and mayors going to sign a letter so that when it goes up to the commissioner, he knows that everybody? We have been discussing this at the COG for about six months, Jim. Yeah. 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 Both in the transportation committee and in the the full. Uh, Cog with the 15 mayors and first selectmen, and they're all on board on this. Okay, okay. Uh, we will present it like I said Wednesday, which is a transportation committee meeting, and then it's up to the uh, uh, chairman of the Cog if he puts it on the agenda. But I'm sure there'd be no yeah. problem there. Well, I okay. think what will happen, uh, it'll get submitted from this meeting on Wednesday immediately. But up I, to I the think, state, I think at the regular Cog meeting, yeah. then it should be endorsed by. It yeah, will be like yeah. all the mayors and selectmen, so that it's clear that this is, you know, this is something that has to be done. And Jim said Wallingford is doing it, and Mayor Dickinson, you know, <laughs> Bill is uh, is chairman. Talk of, about an old man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's been around. He's been there for like twenty some odd years. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, he's mayor for life. Yeah. He is chairman of the transportation committee. So okay. he's been chairman as long as I've been. Yeah, he's going. He's going. Mm -hmm. uh, can we have a motion, please? So move for the application. Second. Okay. Motion was made by Selectman Dabell Stracy. Uh, seconded by Selectman Cardia. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Good initiative, Jim. Jim, can you hang around? Sure. Uh, oh, I'm good at hanging around. All right. A couple of things I want to talk to you about. Okay, uh, consider and take possible action to set a town meeting date of Wednesday, January 22nd, 2014 at 815. Uh, that's prior to our next meeting uh, in the Guilford Town Hall to consider and act upon an appointment of up to three additional members of the Board of Assessment Appeal for the February uh, fiscal year 2013-2014 and 2014-2015 assessment years. Is this a request from the assessor? Or? Yeah. No, well, this is from the Board of Assessment Appeal. Yeah, I meant the appeal. Yeah, I wanted a, just uh, to, okay, yeah. You have a letter in your packet uh, yeah. Yeah. from the clerk yeah. of the Board of Assessment Appeals. Yeah. And but I don't know if he said something, too. I mean, it, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, and also, you have the uh, text from the uh, leader from the town code. It tells us we have to do that. Uh, and oh, I, I need a motion now to set the public hearing. So date. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. I said our next meeting, but uh, before that, next week, I, I'll bring it up later, but next week uh, we have two workshop for public, uh, for, not public hearings, for hearings for our budget from the department heads. That's January 14th and 15th you have in your schedule. So I was incorrect when I said next meeting. I do. 
Yes, Gary. Uh, actually, two questions. This is Wednesday, January 22nd. Is that our next regular selectmen's meeting? Yes. The uh, 20th uh, is a holiday. Right. And we moved the 20, uh, from the 21st to the 22nd uh, in December, I think it was. December okay. Meeting. okay. I, I'm glad I picked that one okay. up. Okay. Um, the only other just the other question I have is is the uh, the letter request two and the uh, the town meeting notice uh, talks about appointment of up to three. Are, are we looking at at three or two? We're looking at three, but um, they're only requesting two. We could appoint three, okay. but they want at least two. Okay. Okay. I have Gary, a question. I mean, uh, Charles. I have a question on the 14th and 15th. The, the published ones all say 15, 16. For the hearings. Uh, it's Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, so it's 15, 16. It's 15, 15 16. I'm 16. sorry. Okay. okay. So it is 15, 16. I'm glad you corrected me on that. What happens on the calendar? Request for the use of town property. There's only one. Oh, excuse me. We didn't. I need a motion. And I need to vote. Um, I would make the motion for the town meeting date to be set on January 22nd. Okay. Second. Good. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Now we'll go to eight. Request for the use of town property. Act on a request from the community nursery school to place a sign on the green advertising that's open house taking place January 28th, 2014. The sign placement is 114 to 128. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gary, you only had one this time. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, any committee reports? Okay. Correspondence? I just want to follow up on um, the petition that was uh, sent to the Board of Selectmen in regard to uh, moving polling place for District 4. Uh, is signed by the residents of District 4. Uh, I've met with the registrars, and uh, they are going to take on the task of looking for an alternative to the current Jones Gymnasium. That's where we poll right now for District 4. Uh, so uh, I've been working with them, and uh, we've got some suggestions that they're going to work on. Uh, as far as um, as uh, they are not requesting in this uh, petition any public hearing. So uh, as far as I know, unless Pam tells me otherwise, she's been away for a while. We don't have to set a public hearing date right now, but the registrars are working on the issue and are uh, aware, obviously aware of what the problem is. Okay. That's all I have in correspondence. Committee reports, we asked for. Um, Old business, any? Uh, I will say and congratulate the 375th uh, Anniversary Committee, which Carl, you're a member of. Um, did an excellent job uh, with the uh, Celebration Jubilee on New Year's Eve day. Uh, we had, how many would you say out there for the pictures? Right there, as you're out there. Couple I, hundred at least. I would. I said 300, 350, yeah. somewhere, yeah. some number like it was, that. It was great, but I looked out the window. I guess 15 minutes before, I didn't see anybody yeah. out there. <laughs> <laughs> but all of a sudden, they, you know, just all congregated, and uh, it was was great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the community center, Karen, you're on the committee as a volunteer too. Uh, the community center was packed with good kids and seniors, and, and it was a great event. And I understand the uh, the concerts. All the concerts were great. Yeah, they were fabulous. So, Not that I had anything to do with it, but okay. I mean the musicians and everything. Were so, uh, as as a first start to the year-long celebration, uh, I think we're off to a good start, and I congratulate the committee. And uh, now we're off to the next one, which is the Crystal Ball, Gary. Uh, Carl. Yeah, that's. I think formal. it's March 29th. Yeah. Crystal Ball. So, look out for uh, the uh, <laughs> the advertisements on that. Okay. New business, anything? Public forum, anybody wishing to address the board? Limited three minutes on any issue. Ms. Carlson. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Take your time. Excuse 
for those of us who are clearly confused about some meeting dates, hope we, Tracy or somebody sends out a, be a, a memo before. <laughs> we will. Uh, <laughs> he's looking at me. On that. Well, I'm the one that didn't know about the 22nd, so. Well, I gave I you the wrong. I gave you the wrong date on the 14th. I had it? the 21st in yeah. my uh, calendar. Okay. Floor's yours. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Suzanne Carlson, and I live on 16 Dunham Drive. I, I'm here to uh, represent on uh, behalf of Senior Center, Sen Care for Seniors. I wrote a letter to all of you and uh, requesting additional bus service hours for the senior buses. Uh, currently, we have a bus available to us four days a week, uh, Monday, and Thursday, there's uh, uh, one bus drivers. And then on Wednesday, there is no bus services. And then on Tuesday and on Friday, there are two drivers. Uh, they cover pretty much all the medical and uh, uh, shopping and all other you know, transportation needs. And they also cover greater New Haven area. Uh, so therefore, we have option to ride a bus to uh, doctor's appointment to New Haven or West Haven or Walling Fellow, all those area. Unfortunately, the demand is very high. I think there's a more increased number of seniors uh, or the people like me, this, this disabled person like me, requesting uh, needing a ride. And uh, uh, for personally, I in my case, I see the specialist in New Haven, New London, Westbrook area, and uh, uh, there are times that where these specialists have a set times in the certain days, so, so therefore my doctors are usually in New Haven office either Wednesday or Thursdays. Well, Wednesday there's no bus service, so that's out. On Thursday, the bus service is really primary focus is for shoppers, for people those needs for grocery shopping. So. So um, medical uh, needs uh, takes a lower priority. And then of course uh, when, like if I have to go to New Haven for doctor's appointment, there isn't enough time for drivers to drop me off and come back because it's not really effective. So therefore they probably have to wait, you know, wait for me to finish it so they can bring me back home. Uh, and, uh, well, and then, of course, uh, what I notice is that there's a lot more increase of a rise for the like uh, people residents at the Gables, and in, and uh, 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 I don't want to just name just one location, but basically, bottom line, I'm trying to say is that there's a higher demand for the bus rides, and then, of course, there is also another option for me to do is to take my ride. And of course, uh, with my ride, um, it takes forever for me to get in a ride. And for example, one time I was uh, stuck in New Haven for two hours, you know, for waiting for my ride to get picked up to my ride. And uh, I mean, I think uh, at least uh, I can, my cognitive uh, thinking is a little clear, so I'm okay to stay stuck out there for two hours. But for some of those seniors, I think two hours would be way too long for them to wait. And it takes forever for us to get to the location uh, because we have to make all these stops on the way to New Haven, if I were to take my ride, you know, to pick up other passengers. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, I'm requesting additional driving time, uh, addu 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 additional hours to uh, manage, uh, give us uh, bus services on Wednesdays and perhaps additional driver on Thursdays. So we have option to uh, have more freely available for uh, the, the right to the medical needs, not just the focus on shoppers. And uh, personally, I go to physical therapy five days a week, uh, Monday to the Friday, and uh, without the really, uh, uh, having this great service I received from town of Gearford, it would not be possible. And uh, uh, so 
So that's my request. Okay. And on top of that, so I did some research. A lot of the neighboring towns, uh, they have a bus services almost Monday to Friday. Okay. And uh, well, like town of Madison, you know, they have abundance of uh, services available for bus. You know, they, for example, they have uh, two drivers on uh, Monday through Friday, and then uh, Monday, Wednesday, uh, Friday, they have a third driver that focuses only for medical rides. Okay. So, uh, I would that's that was uh, what I would like to request. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody else? I don't see anybody else. Okay. Uh, seeing no other business to come before the board selectmen, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. <coughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're adjourned at 9:14. Thank you. So, can I ask you a couple questions? What's the polling place question?